Savisha mnyumba yao. Na waache hii side show ya kuja hapa kudanganya watu ati kwamba wanatafuta mtu ama wanatafuta watu ama nchi nyingine inatafuta watu. What we want to be clear about All right, Nisso says starts right there. Dennis Onsarigo, host of the program. For the first time, Nindi Noro, come yeah, to the program. Thank you very much. Dennis Rodongo, Rosalind Obala. Ladies and gentlemen, yeah. drug wars finally becoming the politics of drugs. Dennis, we saw this coming, or we um, did? We've been seeing it coming since 2013. I mean, there's nothing new about um, fighting drugs in this country. <laughs> um, in 2013, before elections, uh, Political leaders were out there telling people you should not vote for A, B, C, and D because of drug trafficking, because of their, their drug barrels or something like that. There's nothing new. But what is new, that we have the Akashas finally in the U.S. That's what is new. Finally, there's action. Yes. Yes. It, it means there's government that is willing and ready to spring into action and rid this country of drug lords. I, I don't think that is the case. I think there's some pressure coming from outside. Because uh, remember, like the U.S., this is not the first time they're getting involved in the crackdown on drug barons. Remember, before even in 20, 2012, when we had the, the late uh, internal security minister, Saitot, even trying to table a report in parliament attaching some names. And you remember it was very difficult to even connect the names to the report. So I think whatever we are seeing now is just the government trying to act on something that was in the past regime. And if indeed this government wants to work on this, then let us not see politics overlapping what they are doing. Let us see that it is something they are determined and they are working because these are two levels of government. Let them work together and not fight. Dennis, the problem of you know, running politics concurrent to the drugs is, but we get into that, that we don't know where the government ends and where the jubilee starts. Very true. In fact, according to the National Survey on Alcohol and Drug Abuse done by NACADA, the, the highest form of addiction that many Kenyans suffer from is alcohol, bang, and then tobacco. I'm not seeing anywhere methane, I'm not seeing anywhere any heroin, I'm not seeing anywhere any cocaine. But the government is busy trying to fight a war that we can clearly tell that it is political. And what I hate about this is because it is ordinary people who are actually suffering. But until the syringe is in the hands of their children, they will not feel the pinch of it. They will camp in regions, they will begin to put politics into it. But in the meantime, instead of making it a national disaster, where we can now bring money and legislation to actually transform the lives of ordinary Kenyans, we are making it into a political sucker. We want to now brand people and, of course, then give kingpins and therefore ensure that the port and every other business that we have in Mombasa then flows freely without any you know, trouble because mm -hmm. then the hands of the, the, the governor is in there. Ndidi, yes. this clearly politics here. I, I don't think there is any politics in the fight against uh, drug abuse because we have seen the president has a track record. You remember just some few months ago, he bombed uh, a ship full of drugs. <laughs> so was... I, I think it's, a, it's a, a progression from where we've been. And I want to commend the president and the deputy president for being very firm in making Kenya a clean state because you cannot afford to have a narco state yes. here in Kenya. Can, 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 let, me, let me intercept. <clears throat> yes. Do you, do you take evidence to court or you ban it? Uh, are, we, are we really trying to encourage things. a country where we are banning evidence instead of taking it to court and charging people? We are a rule of no, a law country. The president the other day said that he doesn't want to begin a firing squad in, in, in Uhuru Park. <laughs> That's why he, he took a name on a list of shame to, yes. pa to parliament. Yeah. Why is it that now when it comes to drug, <laughs> we want to know, ban uh, evidence? And, 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 and let, let me, let me, let me bring him, what, let me bring him up to okay. speed that um, um, some of the suspects that were arrested yeah. as a result of that ship being blown up, um, a government official showed up in court and said they are not sure what they blew up. <laughs> I, I, I think the, the problem we have yeah. in this country is that uh, we like following the law and then we blame the, the establishment for not doing anything. I think the president's action should actually be to eliminate the vices in our society. We take shortcuts in doing it. Whichever way. Whichever I'm, way. I'm, 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 I'm actually, I'm actually with, 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 with this right this here one. is how we make a narco state. <laughs> <laughs> this right here is how we make a narco state. Where we bomb things and bomb people and arrest people and brand them names let's, without due process. That is the problem. Let's get, get back to the politics of it though. Okay. That centrally, why is Mombasa such the center of it? Do we have any evidence that Mombasa is where all these drugs, you know, is used a lot more than any other country? Do we, Dennis? It's a transit point for, for a very long time. But remember, most of the drugs that come into this country are not even repackaged and 
in Mombasa. They are brought to Nairobi and other places, and they are repackaged into flour or something then before they leave. And I think the first point of stopping these drugs should be at the port and intelligence-led policing. That is the only way we can go about it. And the port is controlled by the national government, isn't it? <laughs> 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 the national government, and this is not the first time we are talking about the port. How many things have been smuggled into the country? Mm. Remember, they also go through our airports, which yeah. are again manned by the same national the government. The same matters. Politics, political pundits are now quick to point out that despite the government promising to crack the whip on drug barons at the coast, the extradition of Akashas has allowed the Jubilee government a chance to speak directly to the coast people. The Coalition for Reforms and Democracy Court, meanwhile, reads political malice in the choice and time and place of Jubilee's war on drugs announcements. Let's take a listen. Yungozi. Sisi ni wazazi na mjiwetu wa Mombasa kweli kumekuwa na mambo ya madawa ya kulevia, watoto wengi wa miathirika. Lakini kila wakati tunasikia tu majina ya natajwa, majina flani, majina flani, lakini hatuoni hatima ambayo inachukuliwa haswa muafaka. Na haswa ususwa, kwa nini swala hili uwa linakuja tu wakati tunakaribia uchaguzi? They are not interested in fighting uh, drug barons or drug peddlers, but they want to settle scores with certain individuals. And I think that is very wrong for a government to do that. Mm, smart, you go first. Very wrong for the government to do this. Why are we doing this just before elections? Valid points? That's the question that the SC and Senator of CIA, James Orengo, put eloquently yesterday when he said that Jubilee has had all the time, they have all the power, they have all the resources, they have the military to fight this drug war. So they either put up or shut up. They <laughs> cannot just put this up for politics. <clears throat> Did uh, Deputy President is on record asking um, opposition to come out clean and speak directly about uh, uh, right. drug barons at the yeah. coast. Mm -hmm. I, it's, it's a balancing act here because according to a local newspaper the other time, um, I, I saw members of Jubilee also in this list. Why haven't I had the president coming out to talk about this? I think it's unfortunate that we have an opposition that fights even the good things. Because when we have a government that is fighting the kind of things they are fighting, I think it sh it should, we should be collectively supporting the government, including the opposition. And I think uh, we are reading a lot of politics in it, yet this is a, a consistent war. We have seen ever since Uhuru Kenyatta took on the reins. He has been fighting this vice every single day. And therefore, there is nothing new. I think the problem with Jubilee supporters is that they try to address things on a very simplistic level. Mm -hmm. The role of a citizen is actually to be an active citizen by questioning the government and by portraying and calling out the government when it is wrong. In 2015, hot on the heels of the drug, I mean, the, the Changa destruction that happened in central Kenya, we saw Uru Kenyatta in, 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 in Mombasa and he declared war then. He declared war in 2016. He declared war in 2013. He's been declaring war ever since he came to power. Yes. And it is consistent with who they are. These people went to school and studied PR. And therefore, the government, we've had a government that is only concerned about winning ratings and being on paper. But doing anything for Kenyan has not been there. And I think it is very, very selfish of us to actually blame the opposition, while well, a government that is gobbling our resources and taking our money is in place, sitting, making roadside declarations, but not doing a single thing to help the people who are actually in pain or in addiction in Mombasa. Mm -hmm. I think it is painful for us to dance on the syringes of those who are addicted. It is terrible. Rosalie. I think from where I sit, it's really sad that we are seeing that now the government is really coming out to fight uh, drug barons. But remember again, if you look at the list that came out, it was not only people on the side of uh, uh, the opposition. We saw that we also had some people from the side of the government. So for me, what I expected as the deputy president came out to condemn what is happening, we will have also seen the deputy president mention some of the people from their side and just give us a position where they stand as a government that we are going to start with this to set the correct state that we don't condone uh, dr uh, drug barons in our country. Then again, you extend an olive branch to the opposition and say, fine, this is not a political uh, tussle anymore. This is something that is affecting our would-be voters. Yes. So for us to win the confidence on, of our people and change the governance of this country, let us fight it jointly. But what we are seeing is uh, trading of words between the government and the opposition. And surely this is not the right time to do that. Are we likely to win this war on uh, drug trafficking? For Jubilee to win this fight, <laughs> they have to, the hands have to be clean. The, 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 no traces of politics. 
should be read in what Jubilee is trying to do. And I think that's the quagmire that they're in, that this fight, the why now question is very important. And yes, I know that they've always been, you know, uh, you know, as, as, as Ndindi puts it, they've always been fighting this war. And also I agree with Danish that Jubilee has been de declaring war for a long time. Action has not been coming, Ndindi. Uh, in fact, I, I, I don't know what you are referring to because the guys we saw being deported are their cashers. I don't know whether she's the sex gen of NASA or NASOA because I haven't seen anyone within uh, the court coalition being targeted. And a suspect is a suspect. Whether you, you are in Jubilee, whether you are in court, you are ruining the lives of Dindi, many children. Dindi, let, let me stop you for a second. I am, yeah. um, in, in 2013, when we had these issues to do with ICC during elections, we said no single Kenyan yeah. should be tried in foreign land because <laughs> you have competent courts in this country. Yeah. Did we just somehow decide the Akashas are not Kenyans by any chance? We should try them across? As you uh, rightly put it, they use Mobasa or Kenya as a transit. And therefore, the damage is spread uh, uh, not just within Kenya, but also outside. Therefore, I think it, uh, it is a, the responsibility of the whole world to fight uh, these cartels. Because when drugs pass through Mobasa to destroy the, lively, uh, the lives of uh, children in Tanzania, then it stops being Kenyan, a Kenyan problem. Is it there is a, is Dennis, it, Dennis, is it, let me is intercept it? kindly. Um, people were accused of heinous charges of course, you know, mass murder, deportation, forceful circumcision, all manner of crimes against humanity. This too is a crime against humanity. Even those ones who are accused and we said that we never tried them outside were crimes against humanity. I think Jubilee by trying to lessen some evil, people who are killed in this country while trying to uplift some is classical against the sun. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's move on and staying in Mombasa County and Jubilee finally believes they have a winning combination to dislodge Governor Ali Hassan Joho. William Ruto yesterday unveiled Suleiman Shabal with his running mate Anania Moboza who are now charged with the responsibility of kicking Joho out of office. Also in the race to succeed Joho is Senator Hassan Omar, who is flying the wiper tickets flag. Rosalind, any chance of this, you know, uh, dislodging Joho? <laughs> I think it's laughable, the, the team that has come out. <laughs> I'm not a voter in Mombasa, but unveiling Shabal after what the entire country heard him speak when he was talking about that this time we have to win <laughs> no matter what, I wouldn't think that he would be the best candidate for that. Because if he was, he would have not been speaking like that. Because a leader, you see the traits from where, the, way, the demeanor and how they present themselves. I haven't seen that. So maybe that is what the voters in Mombasa would like. But for me, Did I uh, don't uh, think so. Uh, what, what is Jubilee thinking? I think for the first time ever, I now believe we have a winning ticket in Mombasa. <laughs> because if you can recall in 2013, in fact, our candidate won uh, Shabal. And he won. Uh, of course, he had won. And then there what happened? Battles, but of course, you know, uh, things didn't turn out well in courts. And we believe that we have the majority of people in Mobasa supporting the Jubilee uh, coalition. And therefore, I think uh, Joho should be packing his bags. And even the government who's in power was actually declared by a Supreme Court through after the battle went through. So by <laughs> legitimizing Joho's candidacy because of a court battle, you're basically delegitimating the, the, the candidacy of Uhuru and the, the person you support. But anyway, I think it is very important for us to say that people are willing to fight and let them go and fight it out. But for me, I'd advise Joho to take it slow. I know he's already proven a point and it's now right. Let him calm down and then go into the grassroots and mobilize the voters. Because then this national politics is trying to play might actually cost him. Because I believe that somebody is actually trying to pick a bone with him. Not for now, but for 2022. Because if you want to crush a king, like the Herodias spirit, you kill a boy before they become a man. That's what exactly they want to do now. So Joe should be wise. He shouldn't be a person who spoils for a fight every time a bone is thrown at him. He should retreat, calm down, do his work, and wait to win. If winning is a sin. Dennis, what's, what's important for Joho to, to, to be this person who can take over from Raila Odinga in ODM or this person who really wants to win his election? Because those are the choices that are on the table right now. I, the man stands a very good chance um, in the future politics of this country. Depends how he plays it. And I think he's in a very good position to run and win uh, in, 20, in, in, in August in, in Mombasa. But again, as, as Danish is saying, uh, there are times you should know how to fight and how far you can go. But 
Joho is this guy who is abrasive, he's out there, he speaks his mind and you can't stop him. I mean, it, this is, is kind of doing politics. Mm -hmm. And I think by doing the same, you keep off your enemies. When you keep quiet too much sometimes, people will step I, on I, you. And I think smart, uh, anyone who would uh, dig into, deeper into the politics of Mobasa, I think a, a ticket that combines the Arabs and the Mijikenda, definitely having the, 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 the heavyweights of those two parts, being Shabal and Maboza, I think uh, we, we, we are good to go. Should, I, should, I, should, should, should I remind you that Zoho beat Moboza not once but twice? Uh, <laughs> should I remind you? There's a difference, there's a difference between a constituency and a county. That constituency is heavily Mijikenda as well. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think Mombasa is one of the, uh, the cosmopolitan country, counties, and you can't, talk, you can't say that the Arabs are the, the majority there. I think the other people, I think that is a place where you find there are so many Luos and Luyas and Kambas and the other tribes. Yeah. So I think when you go uh, talking about the Arabs, then I, I think we are missing a point. So in this case, even where Joho is, remember, the, the governor's ticket only you, you can only go for two terms. So I think what Joho is looking, he's looking ahead that once I'm done with the governorship, I will go for the for the next position. Mm -hmm. And let me remind you that people from Mombasa know the difference between tyranny and freedom. Given a chance, they will choose freedom over tyranny. It is the nature of a human being. And the moment the government stops to dialogue and they force things down people's throats, that's how they lose. Remember by very well that the moment you oppress people and you put them down and you try to constantly remind them why they are not important, why the land in their issue has not been resolved, that's how people then rise up and show that we are actually human beings and we can think for ourselves. That's what is awaiting Jubilee in Mombasa, in my opinion. And I think liberating people and giving them freedom is actually doing what Uhuru has been doing. Giving the people of Mobasa titles, um, <laughs> having mega projects in Mobasa, liberating them, are you is trying to appeal to freedom? a constituency somewhere? <laughs> there is no constituency. There's a strong support of Jubilee government. So give it, give it to him. And now the deputy president and Mombasa governor have been spoiling for a political fight for some time now. The shadow boxing political wars started when William Root appeared to name a strong politician at the coast and fingering him for spoiling children through drugs. The governor of Mombasa has meanwhile responded asking children of Mombasa to stay away from hotels because of obvious reasons. Here is the showdown. The war on drugs is actually a war that we are fighting for our children and for our future. There is no option and there is no possibility of us contemplating losing this war because if we lose this war we will lose our children and we will have no future siasa hapa njoni subui njoni kesho njo for a month but we we appreciate you have been here inatusaidia kiuchumi ina wacha pesa hapa mahoteli mahoteli ya yanaja Kitu tu tuausia watoto wetu wa kike wakae mbali mbali na maeneo hayo. And for reasons the whole country wanajua. Smart, I mean, this is, you can't, you can't afford to laugh because this is about children. We're talking about children. You know what? Uh, we've covered this for a long time on this program. This, the fight between Joho and Ruto has been spoiling, has been building up yeah, for a while. Yeah. Um, and here it is. I mean, uh, it looks like, sort of like a run for 2022 as we know it between the two of these guys and and they looks like it's coming into a hill <laughs> i think it has even gone personal and we are not surprised as a country to see what is degenerating in mombasa because these two have been neck to neck uh, against each other but i think both of them are parents and even as they uh, maintain the political uh, national platform they should also remember that they are parents and there are things that when they say they are role model to the small kids I think the deputy president has been having a free reign in this country, talking the way he wants and giving people names. Finally, he finds his match. And of course, we must be very, very careful not to let people who actually have allegations and accusations leveled against them, their closets are full of skeletons, allegations of skeletons, stand on the ground of moral ground to try to lecture the country on who to elect or not. I think I, I, we are now turning this country now into a natural <laughs> country. Exactly where morality and the rule of law is cast aside so that we are now able to go head to head. Mm -hmm. uh, it is very unfair to compare uh, Deputy President Ruto and uh, Joho. It's like comparing a, an beings. elephant, 
It's like comparing an elephant and a rabbit. They're both human uh, beings. The, the, rec the track record of Ruto as a, as a politician uh, is out there for everyone to see, rising from the, uh, the dustbins, rising from selling chicken yeah. to where he is as a hustler. And not telling he's, us he's how an he inspiration rose. to many yeah. young Kenyans. Mm -hmm. And I think we should stop comparing the two. Did, do you agree with me that maybe we have lowered the standards of leadership in this country to a I level where I can't respect the presidency, I can't respect the governor's space? That's a very good question because you should ask it to those people who are not respecting the presidency. <laughs> the, the likes of Joho and the Code Battalion, they should distinguish between individuals and the uh, positions they occupy. Mm -hmm. But, uh, I mean, first of all, I think it is very, you know, optimistic of him to say we should not compare Joho and, and Ruto. These are two politicians. They're both human beings. They're both men who actually can, you know, control a, a sizable voting, voting block. I think these people are finally realizing that actually the man that they'd hoped would be their savior and would run around the country issuing words and calling for names is finally now getting a match. And that is the idea, is to cut the a match. match? Yeah. In Joho? Definitely. That's a joke. I, I disagree with you people. I think what we should discuss here <laughs> is political decorum which I don't think we are seeing from the current Was crop this like this of politicians the we Grand have Coalition now. the Grand Coalition government, will you say some things about retired President Moy? I mean, those institutions, those institutions as they were, commanded so much respect. And there was something about the presidency. I don't feel it anymore, do I? We yeah. should actually not complain. We should commend the government yes. for giving the freedom of speech. <laughs> Even when you abuse the president, he doesn't care. The government and I think we should be celebrating, not lamenting. The government it doesn't is give freedom. The it's the constitution. Yeah. Yeah. We cannot get a better president than the one we have. A person you accuse, a person you call all manner of names, and they don't care to do anything on you or to you. How do you judge best? Okay, I want to agree with her. I think we shouldn't deviate from political, yes. uh, from decorum in politics. Yeah. I think. We are in a country that we want to, of course, we've been told that we are a middle income economy, which is extremely, we're doubting that. But we need to encourage a scenario where it's an issue-based politics. Exactly. Not personalities, not people's skeletons, not people's private bedroom matters. We need to encourage politics of issues where we discuss the economy, we discuss the issues of drugs, we discuss the issues of our infrastructure, All right. and how we can take the next country to right. the next level. Very well spoken. That will let you take a short break on that note because this show loves decorum. <laughs> <laughs> and we're asking you